Sretan Rojen Danama, Sretan Rojen Danama. Ah, oh, welcome to the 50th episode of the Ozcrow Soccer Show. We are in a festive mood. We're singing happy birthday to us and we're ready to share the love and joy of the Australian Croatian football community with you wherever you may be. Good evening and my name is Tonchi Prusac. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here on our Jubilee 50th episode of the Ozcrow Soccer Show and joining in the celebrations all the way from the Harbour City, Ante Grabovac, MC Ante. How are you doing, Ante? <laughs> Can you make that song a short clip for uh, the promo for future shows? Because that was <laughs> no, that was excellent singing, don't you? That was brilliant. Uh, I'm going to bring that up for the hundredth episode. Let me tell you. Oh, uh, roll on the hundredth episode! But we are. It's the fiftieth episode. Happy birthday to us all! Big shout out to Josip Zilic if he's tuning in. He was a big part of the um, season one. Um, Legend. Some nice words of happy birthday uh, there as well today. So. I've, um, whatever you want to call it, pro song and dance, praise and all that kind of thing from him. But, mate, we've got an action-packed, jam-packed show for our 50th episode. Ante, tell us what awaits us tonight. Yes, exactly right. No time for reviewing. Let's move forward. We've got um, some fantastic guests, uh, some special players from the Gold Coast Knights, the championship premiers of the uh, Gold Coast Knights. Of course, I've got the big Australia Cup match next week as well. We've got Ante Poljak and Jakob Mundic. Um, ready to come on air with us after the news. Following that, we've got um, a live cross to uh, Belmore Sports Ground where Sydney United are in action tonight. They're at halftime and then leading Sydney Olympic by two goals to one. Live from Belmore Sports Ground, we've got some guy with the same surname with me called Liam. So uh, oh, he's my oh, son. Liam, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then after Liam, we've got Zoran Sabjak as well from the Croatian Herald joining us. So, yeah, it's going to be a massive show. Yeah, speaking of birthdays, it's the Croatian Herald of Yesnik's 40th uh, birthday, 40th anniversary, if you like, uh, this week. So uh, we'll, um, an, an icon of the Australian Croatian community, something that both yourself, Ante, and myself have in the past been an integral part of, and it certainly was a big part of both our lives. Uh, folks, we've got a massive show, as, as Ante mentioned, but we've also got a massive announcement as well. And we're hoping to get him on the show to announce it today himself personally, but he's a very, very busy man. And no wonder it's, his, his club is just heavily involved at the moment in just success after success after success, both on and off the park. And it's quite a busy period for for the, uh, for him personally. But uh, we'd like to thank I'm Adrian Pulich of Gem Life, who have stepped up to be our major sponsor for the rest of this year ensuring that we will definitely see 25 episodes this year. And this is, what, our 20th episode, so at least another five episodes. It'll probably take us up to late September, right up until the um, Australian-Croatian soccer tournament, which we hope in the next few weeks to have quite a fair bit of uh, guests coming from Adelaide with all the latest news. So much happening in that f uh, field as well. Speaking of next week's show, we will also have Alex Trninic, the technical director of um, O'Connor Knights, uh, Ante will tell us a little bit more about their celebrations as well. There's a lot of celebrations happening in the Australian Croatian community around Australia at the moment, but uh, he'll be joining us later on, later ne uh, next week. Which, uh, Ante, we've got a special announcement about that as well next week's show. Oh, did you want to say it, or did you, did you want me to break it? About absolutely, we do, yeah. don't you? <laughs> you now, break next it. All right. Well, next week on Tuesday night, the Melbourne Knights are involved in an Australia Cup fixture. On Wednesday night, it's the Gold Coast Knights involved with an Australian Cup fixture, which means we now have to uh, find a day that, that suits um, everyone. So we are actually going to go on a Thursday night. So next Thursday night at 8pm, we will actually go live to air. It might be become a bit of a weekend preview rather than a weekend review kind of a uh, show but uh yeah look um that's going to be another huge show but in the meantime we're going to take a very very quick break a sponsors break our major sponsor for the rest of the year and uh, when we return it's the australian croatian roundup with ante folks don't go away who's to say who's young who's old compared to who age is complicated you see most people really stop getting older at age 26, but their bodies just don't get the memo. So hidden inside most over 50-ish year olds is the soul and spirit of a 26-year-old. 
with the same loves and desires and hopes and dreams, just in slightly different packaging. Why waste time wondering when you could be enjoying? It's your life, and life is what you make it. So, what are you waiting for? Auntie, I yes. see you. Welcome back. So, indeed, thank you so much. Let's hit it. All the news about Australia Cup starting on Saturday afternoon. A strange um, Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. Sydney United Sports Centre. Everybody get on down there. Sydney United versus Brisbane Raw. Then, as you mentioned before, we've got two matches on Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday night, like the Melbourne Knights. Get on down there to support the Knights as they play Campbelltown City in their round of 16 fixture. And then on Wednesday night, our two guests this evening will be speaking a lot more about this, where the Gold Coast Knights take on Western United in a huge, huge clash on the Gold Coast on Wednesday night. So um, let's hope all three teams are in the quarterfinals beginning on Saturday afternoon. But um, yes, let's fingers crossed for that. Yeah. Speaking of the Gold Coast, let's go to MPL Queensland and look at this. Winners, winners, winners. Gold Coast Knights, 4-2 winners over Brisbane Olympic. And so we had to add that picture, the first picture, which is the Premier's picture, which was taken on the weekend, which is uh, on top of the uh, winning the Cup. So Cup winners and Premiership uh, winners this year. Congratulations to the Gold Coast Knights. And they round off with their last round of the season this week with the eighth versus first fixture on Saturday um, at 6 p.m. against Rockdale Rovers at Old Mac Stadium before their big Australia Cup fixture, which we've already mentioned. Speaking of premiers, speaking of champions, Victoria, MPL 2, the final round. Dandy got up by two goals to nil over Eastern Lions and they confirmed again their, um, you know, champions uh, status and their Finished the season on 49 points, five points above um, the second place, Manningham. So um, congratulations to Dandy. Congratulations to Gold Coast. And look, you know, it's fantastic how we have that. And Torch, you've got some uh, footage there. Yeah, which is that's a great, great uh, creations and flares. Just goes, goes, <laughs> just goes the two, two go together. But uh, look at that. Congratulations to Dandenong. Hey, look, uh, they were the uh, Dandenong City Champions. There with the champions, and we'll be speaking a little bit later on in the show with um, Zoran Sabjak, um, the, the editor in chief of the Hrvatski Vjesnik, the Croatian Hill. That's his club, Dandy City, as it is affectionately known. Yes, Croatians, flares, and fines they all to go together, I think. So, in yeah. terms of the top goal scorer list, uh, so in terms of uh, Dandy, we had a player in that top five, and that is um. Air Connors, and he did well scoring 11 goals in his 25 fixtures. So, um, so very well done to him and um, a huge part of, obviously, um, Dandy doing so well this season. In NPL Victoria, final round, it was, unfortunately, not one victory for any Croatian club. Um, Heidelberg defeated the Knights 3-2. Greg Gully defeated St. Albans 2-0. And North Geelong, unfortunately, were relegated. Taunchi, you were there. Tell us what happened there. Well, mate, I'll tell you what, right up until the 80th minute, North Geelong was in it. Um, scores started filtering in from other grounds. Uh, Bentley Greens were, were losing against Avondale. Uh, we had uh, Moreland City were getting thumped 5-0 by Oakley. And there was a half chance around about the 80th minute. Uh, one of the North Geelong players almost, almost, you know, I won't say it, it should have gone in because it kind of went a good two metres wide of the post, but could have gone in, put it that way. Uh, it was a very youthful side, very different side. Look, how last had eight changes, but some of the players that they've got on their bench and the depth that they've got in their side is just extraordinary. It just wasn't to be. It, the rebuild starts, you know. The rebuild now starts. There was something like a dozen teenagers or dozen young players given a go this year. Um, Luke, Luke Zivcic at the moment, who's the striker, who's the main striker for North Geelong, he unfortunately was this week over in Croatia, and apparently he's over in Croatia trialling with the Hajduk split under-19 under youth team. Um, it's someone of maybe his ilk, his calibre, even though he's very young, 
but he's you know he's someone who is capable of putting the ball in the back of the net. And I think he actually scored against South Melbourne in the first time. So it just wasn't to be. Dandenong City takes North Geelong's spot. We'll still have three Croatian teams in next year's NPL division. And North Geelong now will take their place in NPL 2 alongside the likes of Preston Macedonia, Caroline Springs' George Cross, Bentley Greens, of course. And that's that's a huge... Um, Western United teams Western like that. Western United, hopefully, Melbourne hopefully City, they can, uh, come back up just like mm-hmm. Dandy did. Yeah, yep, fingers crossed. Yeah, but anyway, moving fingers on. Crossed. Oh, Ante, before we forget, before we forget, just two big cheerios uh, to Johnny Stanicic from the Croatian Socialites. We've uh, entered a little bit of an agreement um, for the Croatian so- uh, Socialites to uh, also kind of simulcast our um, our podcast via the uh, popular Croatian Socialites page. So if you're listening to this and you're not a member yet of the Croatian Socialites, go on the Facebook page, join up. Um, and it's it's kind of like a virtual Croatian community these days, which is oh, the way things are travelling. And we've also got an international viewer all the way from Metković in Croatia, Jure Dragović, um, who's normally you know um, doing a radio show, but he's probably going to do a radio show all the way from over there. Big shout out to Jure um, Study uh, over in Metković. Metković figures very very prominently in our Croatian roundup a little bit later on, but. We digress. Back to you, Auntie. No problems. All the way in. Yeah, Johnny Stonichich, thank you so much. And the Croatian Socialites, Domino Richard, a fantastic group. And, of course, the Knights uh, have an elimination final on Friday night. So it's a huge match for them, 7.30 p.m. against Port Melbourne Sharks. It's the first time in a long while that they've actually been in the semifinals. So go out and support them. So they've got two huge fixtures, obviously, Friday night and Tuesday night, Tuesday night being the Australia Cup. In terms of the top goal scorers list, well, you can see there why the Melbourne Knights actually did fare well and come fourth. They did have a couple of the uh, players here score, you know, double figures, etc. Whereas with, when you look at St. Albans and North Geelong, very, very low. The highest goal scorer had only four goals. And then with North Geelong, um, also, it was pretty Aiden much three Gardner, goals. Yeah. Was high goal yeah, absolutely. So now, there's now Ante, goal scorers. Yeah, yeah. Ante, with North Geelong, would you believe? I think the biggest, the the, the most goals scored was by own goal. <laughs> <laughs> so own goal, I think, got like four that. goals. If I if I if I'm if I'm not mistaken, or three might have been the same as Aiden Gardner, but there. That, yeah. That's like when I played all age for Zagreb. That's that's what used yeah. to happen to us. Let me tell you, MPL Victoria under twenty ones. Uh, there we have um, where we finished. So actually, North Geelong finished first of, of all the Croatian clubs. So uh, well done to the under-21s there. So and, they, Yos- and, Josip, and sorry, Josip Zilic in the con- comment section says that uh, Luke Zivcic is back now from Cro- Croatia and he's ready to take his place for the North Geelong under-21s in the Olymp- elimination final versus Hume on Saturday. So excellent stuff there. Good um, luck. I, I assume that is at Hume, um, in the third versus six year. Go the other 21s. All right, moving over to Canberra. And O'Connor Knights were 1-0 victors. And that pretty much with two rounds to go assures them of, you know, the premiership as well. So uh, go the O'Connor Knights. And um, congratulations. Obviously, they were only promoted this year. And they've won the ACT League. So uh, brilliant. And next Thursday, we'll be speaking to them. So we're really looking forward to that. And unfortunately, Canberra, Croatia were 1-0 losers on the weekend. This weekend, both teams, O'Connor are at home on Saturday afternoon and Canberra are away on Sunday afternoon. So you can go and watch both matches if you uh, love your football. Yeah. Over in Newcastle, um, round 18 is done. Qualifying final is happening. Newcastle, Croatia versus Northwest North United Wolves. And if Carl, if you're um, tuning in and you know the actual venue, let us know because at the time that we were doing this, it said to be advised as to when that particular fixture uh, will be played, where it will be played. But look at that, 11-1 victory to finish off the Premiership season. Newcastle Croatia in second spot, and they've been promoted as a result of Azuri already have a, a team higher. So two years oh, okay. in a row, and pretty the, t- the team only started two years ago. So um, congratula- restarted because there was yeah. like a 15-year hiatus. So well done, Newcastle Croatia, and so doing where, great so- things there. So where do they move to? What's the what's the division called? So this is zone zone F League One. So what's is yeah, it a Premier I'm League? Pretty, or... I'm pretty sure it's zero. I'm pretty sure they've got a <laughs> zone F League zero from what I've been seeing. So yeah. yeah, and in the reserve grade they came first as well. So 
congratulations to everyone up in Newcastle. Uh, Sydney United on the weekend at the moment, it's still 2-1. They're leading in their round 30 fixture. This match was supposed to happen on Sunday afternoon in line with all the other last round fixtures. But this Sydney Olympic match has been moved to Wednesday because both teams have got nothing to play for. There are no finals this year. And they are pretty much, look at that, in ninth and 10th position before this particular fixture um, this evening. So, um, yeah, not a really good season in the league for Sydney United. But let's hope they can continue their fantastic cup form. Um, obviously, they're playing tonight. And then the, the Waratah Cup final, that has actually been confirmed and scheduled for Leichhardt Oval. And that will be a 3 p.m. kickoff on Sunday, September 10. So get on down there and um, follow Sydney United. And, you know, hopefully they can win that particular trophy and they become the most successful uh, football New South Wales team in that particular Waratah Cup competition. So um, that would be fantastic. Yeah. NPL New South Wales League 2. Herschel Zag, they two wins in a row. Let's hope they can finish the season on a very bright note. They play uh, the first place Union New South Wales to finish off their season this Saturday evening. So get on down there and support them. MPL Tasmania, Glenorchy, they count with only three rounds to go. They can't come first, but, um, you know, they will, they have been doing their best and finishing second is good. So hopefully they stay that way and they place the fourth place Kingsborough this weekend. Over in Brizzy, Brizzy lost 4-3, but of course they still came first. They promoted and the Premiers and will look out for their semi-final action. Now, if you look at their top goal scorer list, geez, look at that. The top two goal scorers in that particular league, 24 goals and 20 oh, goals. Wow. I mean, when you have goal scorers like that scoring yeah. 44 goals for you, that's brilliant. And so well done. And they're getting promoted to FQPL3 Metro next year. Great stuff. South Easy. Coast, indeed. South Coast Premier League. This is the final round. So great to see. Um, South Coast finish up with that particular result and a 7-2 victory over Balambi. And they had some of their top goal scorers in that top goal scorer list as well. So um, congratulations to the South Coast guys. And um, yeah, well done on the season. And Advin Trebinchevich being their top goal scorer with 13 goals for the season and rebuilding. Come on, we want to see them higher up the ladder next year. In WA... They had the double header. Western Knights won, Mandura won, Gwellop won, Rockingham won. So everything finished in a draw. And Western Knights are still with one round to go, one point ahead of Mandura. Gosh. So all to play for. All they have to do is win. But they're playing the third placed Jundalup. So uh, it's going to be an interesting fixture. But it is at home at Nashfield. So let's hope that um, Western Knights can join O'Connor and join Brisbane and join uh, Gold Coast and join Dandy in being premiers for this year. So um, all to play for and get on down there and support the Knights. Uh, Gwellop are finishing off their season against the bottom place Forest Field on Saturday afternoon as well as all games kick off at the same time. Now, Antia, is it the, just the top team or top two teams get promoted to next year's WA NPL? We'll figure that out next week, okay? Yeah, if anyone's in the chat from WA and they know Matt Yurchevich or someone like that, please pop it in the chat section there. Is it just the top team or is it the top two teams, in which a case um, Western Knights already are assured of um, of a spot in next year's WA NPL? Because, mate, that would be absolutely brilliant. We would end up having um, teams. There you go. Chalo, Chalo. Teams, Shall I just said it's a top two, so and there you go. Know, so very well done, thanks, so that, Tony. So that means we've got a Croatian teams in every state NPL competition, I guess, bar Northern New South Wales. If but uh, Newcastle, Croatia, give them a few years and they'll get there, no worries. <laughs> they'll get there, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, so. speaking of premiers, I forgot to mention Adelaide, Croatia as well. They finished premiers and uh, they had the week off and they are playing in the finals this weekend. So they're playing first grade against Burkala. And the under-18s also um, did very well, and they're playing the Blue Eagles. So get on down there and um, support the guys. I didn't have the dates and times and all that for the kickoff. So, um, so yeah, if you are in Adelaide, follow the socials, et cetera, and get there. And as you can see, the Adelaide Croatia Raiders in first grade, they had two players, one, uh, one with 16 goals and one with 15 goals. So it's a fantastic return. And in the under-18s, they had three in the top five of Golden Boot, which is brilliant. So and that's really good 
sign for the future of Adelaide Croatia as well when you've got the youngsters scoring a lot of goals. Mm. So this week's winners list, Taunchy, we had 12 teams this week, only six this week. That's not what we want to see. 50% strike rate. Is that good? <laughs> not good enough. 50% reduction. That's what we had. <laughs> Indeed. Hopefully there'll be a lot more winners next week. But um, before, speaking of winners... Torchy, like it's great to see grassroots football. And uh, look, I was fortunate enough to go to Penzas Park on the weekend and I saw a fantastic under 16s final. Before that, Hersel Zagab had already won a grand final, the under 15 boys. But please play this, play this goal for the under 16s. Watch this. As play comes in. Bring it, throw in. Back. Good Here crowd. We go. Great crowd. There was a Croatia, huge Croatia. Here he is. Stepan Malish steps up. Banger. Absolute screamer. One nil win for Zag. There, there were celebrations all around. There was a fantastic crowd and uh, huge Croatian flags there and stuff. So it was actually a great, great um, morning there and afternoon at Penzas Park. And um, there's more grand finals for Zagreb this week. Uh, over 45s men's on Friday night at Ador starting at 7 p.m. And then all age E's men, 5 p.m. at Peakhurst and 21B women's as well playing on Sunday at Peakhurst. So good luck to all of those Zagreb teams and you can check it out on the socials. Yeah, brilliant That's stuff. a wrap from me. Brilliant stuff. There's still more stuff to talk about the Australian-Croatian scene as well. This week um, we've got some big news about the young Matildas. The young next generation um, of young Matildas was selected for an August camp, a 28-player squad. We've got two young Australian-Croatian lasses, one who appeared on this show not that long ago. Um, we've got uh, Daniela Garlic and Natalie Pichak, who's from Geelong, ex-North Geelong Warriors uh, goalkeeper. She's now playing in um, uh, NPL Victoria, NPLW Victoria with Calder United. She was a guest on the um, one of the um, sister podcasts of the Ozcrow Soccer Show, the Game of Two Halves podcast, about three weeks ago thereabout. Bouts, but um, great to see on the back of the success of the Matildas. Um, and last week's interview with Bianca uh, Garlish, how good was that? I still reckon it's one of the best interviews we've done, who recently signed with Central Coast Mariners. We've got two young Australian Croatian girls who have made the um, who've made the uh, uh, national team. Now there are two young Australian Croatian gents as well. They've also been named today. In the um, Aussie, uh, in the Oliru squad for the AFC Under Twenty Three Asian Cup, we've got Nicholas Bilokapic, and we've also got Noah Botic. And Nicholas was on the, our show last year, and there's a photo of when he appeared on the show. So well done to uh, Nicholas, and well done to Noah. Um, not as many Croatians as we once upon a time used to have, but um, as they say, bez Hrvata nema zlata. Yeah. Nicholas. Nicholas got player of the match as well on the weekend. He's doing great stuff. Yeah, really, really doing well. So fantastic stuff there. And last but not least, North Geelong on their last round, um, which unfortunately they weren't able to defeat South Melbourne in the NPL. But prior to the game, the club held a reunion, a past players officials reunion night, uh, reunion luncheon. And, and there's a couple of the photos of some of the... Uh, Greats from 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 past years is uh, Robbie Chorsic, uh, kind of not right in the middle there. Adrian Savinsky, another one. Um, second from the right, Steve Horvath Senior, who was uh, a long time president as well. Mio Trupkovic in the front row, and also the current president, Tom Trupkovic, crouched. Um, obviously, they're cousins. Yeah, they're not brothers, but they're cousins. They're crouched in the front row. So, a big shout out to everyone at North Geelong Warriors. Um, they've got a very, very good future ahead of them, despite the fact that they were relegated into NPL 2 for next season, but it's a chance to rebuild. Uh, and, we're gonna... uh, just a quick quick update, as uh, Peter Fink is yes. saying around the grounds, uh, Sydney United are 3-1 up now, so it's a great way to finish the season and hopefully bang those goals in for Saturday afternoon against Brisbane Raw. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're t well, it's going to be time now to very, very quickly, um, we're going to uh, take a break. When we return, folks... We will then do the Australian, the Croatian roundup, and there is lots happening there. Let you tell, let me tell you this. Don't go away. It's the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Our name is derived from the Greek prefix macro, large. From the day we were born, this has been a promise for the future. We have grown through dedication, sweat, self-denial. 
faithful to our mission of being on the side of those who put themselves on the line. Through our name, we celebrate the greatness of those who believe there are no obstacles higher than their dreams. The courage to get back up after falling. The obstinacy of believing until the end. These are the values embedded in our logo. The Macron Hero. It's a celebration of sacrifice and tenacity. Up until your personal victory. Until your arms are in the sky. Become your own hero. No, it's not some circus. No, it's not a clown show. It is the Oz Crow Soccer Show. And cue the merry-go-round music because, Ante, it's time for the Croatian Roundup. And let me just say, the coaching merry-go-round in Croatia has just gone up a notch in the last couple of days. Um, wow. Where do we start? Igor as, as we expected. As we expected. <laughs> Igor Bishan, well... Which means kind of it was a mutual agreement to break the contract. I don't know and I don't believe a word of that. But Igor Bishan no longer is the coach of Dinamo Zagreb. Right, old news. Then at 2 o'clock he was swimming in the ocean. At 3 o'clock he was uh, the coach of Dinamo Zagreb. Metković's own, Sergei Yakirovic. And uh, as Jure Dragovic says... Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up. This is what Yuri has said. All the way from Croatia, all the way from Metković. Thanks for the shout-out, boys. Yes, right here the, to the shock discovery that new Dynamo manager, Sergei Yakirovic, is a nephew of mine. What? His mum, Yelena, and I are second cousins. Our granddads were brothers. Blah, blah, blah. And no show from Croatia. TJ Yaraz Mario Kozula is doing it instead. Well, folks. Everyone's related to each other. That's right. Well, if that's the case, Jure Dragovic, get Sergei on the Ozcro Soccer Show. Okay. Yes, we want next to, week. We, next we week, have... Sergei. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Sergei Yakirovic, there you go. He's the, uh, he is the, so he was, I don't know what you want to call it. He was courted. He was kidnapped. He was, I don't know, he was uh, swayed to come from Rijeka to Dinamo. Um, and, um, yeah, there's a lot of kind of ill feeling, sour sort of feeling about uh, that move from a lot of the Rijeka supporters and establishment. But guess what? Rijeka now have done something similar, They've, but they've gone about it the right way. The president contacted the president, asked for permission to speak to Jelko Sopic, the legendary Gorica keeper, a coach, who is no longer the Gorica coach. It has been announced officially he's the new Rijeka coach. So it's just madness at the moment. Merry go round. Merry go round. It is, it's just going nuts. But one of the first things that Sergei Yakirovic did was sign Lokomotiva's Wunder Kid, 19 year old um, Luka Stojkovic. Now, this guy they are saying is, 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 is big. You know, he's the next big thing. Um, Heyduk apparently wanted him, but, you know, he wants, he's a Zagreb kid born through and through, um, came up through the Lokomotiva youth system. He's been signed there for about reported 3 million euros, um, and Yakirovic hasn't stopped there. There's talk that he wants to bring more players in. There's even talk that he wants to uh, um, sign another Wunder kid from Rijeka this time, 19-year-old Franjo Ivanovic, who came over from a, a German outfit, Augsburg. So there's a lot of lot of stuff going on. I tell you what, folks, it's pretty darned eventful at the moment in Croatia. All right, let's talk about what is actually happening in Croatia on the field. Slaven Belupo and Istra fought out a two-all draw. Hajduk split, defeated Rudesh 2-0. Very good crowd. Rudesh is probably the biggest crowd of the season. Four and a half thousand or something like that. We're not going to go into the hooliganism and all the... Um, the, they weren't the, pleasant the, towards Prosenetsky, were they? They certainly weren't pleasant towards Pro Prosenetsky in what they were uh, seeing and, and in what they um, rolled out on the transparent, as they say, the old um, um, yeah, 
placards and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, moving along, Rijeka defeated Lokomotiva Zagreb 2-1. Osijek defeated Gorica one goal to nil. Mio Tsatash scored his 100th HNL goal. And uh, Dinamo Zagreb and Varaždin, they postponed. Now, we'll quickly jump to the ladder, then we'll look back at the fixtures. If we have a look at the ladder, first of all, Heiduk Split, they have not started like this for a long, long time. In fact, most Heiduk supporters, me included, can't remember when they've actually started with four wins from four games. Osijek doing well in second spot. Rijeka in third on ninth um, at the f- foot of the competition standings. Rudesh with five losses from five games. But if we dr- jump back to the uh, fixtures coming up this weekend, Gorica hosting Slaven Belupo. Uh, Varazdin hosting Heyduk Split, and they are tipping one of the biggest crowds at Varazdin's um, stadium for a long, long time. 1,500 tickets have been made available to the Heyduk Split fans. You can bet your bottom dollar there's going to be triple, maybe even quadruple that actual Heyduk Split fans in the stadium itself. Lokomotiva hosting Osijek in Zagreb. Uh, in Pula, Istra taking on Rudesh. But get this! The grudge match, the new grudge match, or is it the is it the battle between the Afiliala and the uh, mother club? Dinamo Zagreb hosting Rijeka uh, Monday morning, 5 o'clock our time here in, um, in Australia. So that's going to be really, really interesting. All right, let's move our attention now to the second division. And I tell you what, the second division is going to be a really interesting competition this year. They're the results. Zirinsky, Yuri of us. Promoted from the third tier competition, uh, have, have secured their second win in as many games 2 1 win over Vukovar. Dubrava and Sibalia won all in Zagreb, Bielo Brdo and Dugopolje likewise in Osijek. Solin and Shibenik, Shibenik running out 3 2 winners, and big news um, to do with NK um, Solin. Um, guess who has signed with them? None other than Grgo Lovrencic, the ex Hajduk split Hungarian international. That is a big signing, aren't it? A massive coup because that I tell you, what, he's um. There's a lot, a lot of young players there, and uh, he's with his experience, with his um, knowledge, with his football brain. Um, uh, uh, apparently, he loves Croatia so much that one of the first things he did was uh, learn Croatian or study Croatian, um, and it certainly um, got him in good stead because he's remaining in Croatia that little bit longer. Um, and Solin, I think once they click, they're going to be a very, very good unit. Kroatia's Mijavci and Sesvete nil-nil in uh, Imotski. Jarun Zagreb, after a bad start last week, they bounce back with a great win, 4-2 over uh, Orient 19-19 from Rijeka. So if we look at the competition standings after two rounds, Šibenik and Zrinski Jurjevac sitting pretty at the top. At the bottom in the relegation zone, you've got Orient and Vukovar, um, but we look to turn our attention now to the round three fixtures, and there we have it. There's a there's a game early Saturday morning, so Friday night their time. Dugopolje taking on Croatia's Miyavci. Four games Sunday morning. In fact, three of them kick off at 1 a.m. One kicks off at 3 a.m. Šibenik and Bielo Brto, but the other games, Cibali and Jarun, Orient and Vukovar, Zrinski, Jurevac and Enka Solin. And then what they're doing in Croatia in the in the in the Prva Liga, if you like the um, they're having a regular Monday night fixture. And this is a great thing, um, a standalone Monday night fixture. Um, this Monday, it's or our Tuesday morning, Sesvete Zagreb taking on Dubrava Zagreb. So that's fantastic news. Um, all right, well, that's that's it of the domestic side of things. Let's turn our attention now to the international side of things. So um, D- Dinamo, um, actually, first of all, Rijeka in the Conference League, they've got a tough game. So they're basically left without a coach. <laughs> so what's going to happen is their sports director, their football operations director, uh, Darko Rajc Sudar, and Radomir Jalovic. Now, Jar- Jalovic is a Cernogorac, he's a Montenegrin. He's the only member of Sergei Yakirovic's ensemble, if you like, that didn't follow um, um, fell, follow Yakirovic to Dinamo. He decided to stay put. Now, he was a playing legend in his playing days for Rijeka. And um, there you go. Uh, the the uh, Montenegrin, Jalovic, he's now going to assume the role as a co-coach along with um, Raik Sudar. But Jelko Sopic apparently is travelling to France w- with the team, uh, but he will be officially um, announced as the coach 
uh, after they return. So that's happening um, as far as the uh, um, Europa Conference League. Turning our attention to the uh, uh, Europa League, which is like the second tier after the Champions League. Dinamo Zagreb still have got an opportunity to play uh, league football, if you like, or group football. They uh, take on Sparta Prague from the Czech Republic. First leg is this Friday morning, um, 4 o'clock kickoff at the Maximir Stadium. That's going to be a, um, well, a very important game. Uh, and Sergei Yakirovic's first game at the helm of Dinamo Zagreb. So it'll be interesting to see how the, um, how the Plavi take to their new coach. That's going to be pretty interesting, I think. Um, Zvinsky Mostar, the Hetzeg Bosanski Croatian team, they will also be in the uh, playoff phase of the Europa League. Now, if they don't win in this Europa League playoff phase, they will then play in the Conference League where the EK is at the moment. So Lask, Linz, um, they are the side that they stand in the way of our Zvinsky Mostar. The first round leg will be played in Linz in Austria at the Reifeisen Arena. I think that's how you pronounce it. Kickoff is at 5 p.m. So that's going to be happening um, uh, this Friday. Now, the other news is the Croatian uh, national team has been selected for upcoming games against um, Latvia and Armenia. Um, now, there's lots and lots of controversy about that. There's the team. Um, but the uh, main controversy centres around the omission of uh, Marko Livaja. Now, Marko Livaja has been left out of the uh, Croatian squad. And um, there's a lot of Dalish now, thanks to Croatia Week. Uh, there's an article in English. There's the comments and there's the justification that Zlatko Dalic has given why he omitted Marko Livaja. Now, remember, one of those games, the game against Latvia, is to be played in Rijeka, where this incident happened last June. So... There it is. After the incident in June at Ruevica and Marco's subsequent departure from the national team, I believed it was wisest for both the team and Marco to spare him in these matches. As it is known, we received a conditional punishment from UEFA and any potential incident could result in us playing against Turkey without spectators. Given all these circumstances, I consider this decision to be reasonable. All right. Ante, your thoughts. Is he bending? Is the Croatian Football Federation bending to a small handful of hooligans that seem to control everything? Or did he do the right thing? What's your opinion before we open it up to the uh, to the chat lines? Yeah, I just think that um, obviously he's a divisive figure. And, you know, we've seen in the past with Rebic and players like that, that um, Dalic doesn't, you know... Uh, you know, want those players to disrupt his team and disrupt his squad. So uh, I think it's a little bit of a punishment um, to him. And, uh, you know, I, I think eventually he will be called back into the squad. But I just think he's trying to, you know, get him to maybe, you know, wake up, behave, you know, smarten up a little bit before he's welcomed into the national team. That's my opinion anyway. Yeah, yeah. I uh, Look, I, I think... Honestly, I think I understand. I understand not playing him in Rijeka for that very reason, and we can't afford any, even the slightest incident. But there's still another game that has to be played, so he could have been called into the squad. Maybe he sits out the Rijeka game for obvious reasons, but then travels abroad, abroad with the team. But look, what's happened behind the scenes? I don't know. We're not privy to it, but hopefully, hopefully, it's done in a, in a smarter way. I guess if. if for want of a better word, but yeah, look, that's kind of a bit of a oh, I don't know what's the word to describe it. Not 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 a, not a nice thing to be happening, but um, I kind of do. I understand it. Do I get it? I don't know about that, but but that's just yeah, that's just how it is. He'll be in there. He'll be in there eventually. Uh, eventually, yeah. All right, folks. Well, that leaves us now with nothing more than to take a bit of a commercial break, and when we return, we're going live up to the Gold Coast, and we'll be talking with our uh, guests for tonight. Uh, they are the premiership, part of the premiership winning Gold Coast Knights, the duo from the Gold Coast, uh, Ante Poljak and Jakob Mudnic. They'll be joining us very shortly. Folks, don't go away. We'll be back straight after these short messages from our sponsors. Welcome to Slavicek Studio Architecture. Our approach combines modern design with harmonious solutions tailored to your unique needs. We listen closely to your vision and turn it into a functional, beautiful living environment that truly feels like home. 
Our designs cater to your needs and evolve with you over time, encouraging deeper connections with family and friends. Specializing in custom residential homes and boutique apartments, we balance luxury and comfort to create a welcoming atmosphere for everyone to enjoy. Discover a world of inviting and captivating design at www.slavycheckstudio.com.au. Contact us for a journey from idea to reality. Slavicek Studio Architecture, turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's our 50th episode and we are indeed celebrating it with a jam-packed show tonight. And thank you to our new major sponsor, Gem Life. Um, yeah, uh, for, for I guess what, if you're really interested to find out very what Gem Life is all about, they do some amazing, amazing work in the area of retirement villages and things like that. Resorts, retirement resorts, yeah. not villages. Um, yeah. Go to gemlife.com.au. Yeah, Rob Slavicek was just sharing today. He's got a great project happening in Sydney with A.V. Jennings. So uh, it's yes. great to see Croatians doing so well. So uh, well done, Robbie, and uh, well done, Adrian, of course, as well. Yeah. Now it's time for our guests for tonight from um, all the way from the Gold Coast. They are members of the, pre the newly crowned premiers of the Queensland um, NPL competition, the Gold Coast Knights. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome to the show Jakob Mudnich and Ante Poljak. Gentlemen, how are you? Good evening and welcome to the Ozcro Soccer Show. Good evening, guys. How are we? Very well. We're doing good. Very good. How are you going? Very good. Very good. Well, gents, first of all, it's been a huge last couple of weeks, months even, up there on the Gold Coast. Um, and um, I, was, I was talking to uh, uh, Jody Dickens, the, uh, the uh, senior director, earlier today, and she was saying it's amazing that we've only been in the NPL since 2019, but it, we've, it's just been so many highs in that sh short amount of time. But speaking of the highs, the last, like I said, the last few weeks has been absolutely incredible. What's the buzz like around at the moment at the Croatian Sports Centre in, uh, in, in Gold, on the Gold Coast? Yeah, it's been it's been a great few years. I think I've I've been a part of the club for just over two seasons now, or last season and now this season. I guess just with the grand final last year and then um, Kappa Cup and so far the premiers this year just kind of just keeps on rolling and you know we're doing quite well. And I think that's kind of the collective feeling is the job's not finished. I guess in a way, you know, we still got a grand final, we still got FFA Cup. So as much as you want to sort of enjoy it in the moment, it's always you know what's the next thing. I guess. What's the next thing on the plate? So yeah, yeah. As I said, so, the buzz it's good. You know, won the premiership a couple of weeks ago. Won the Kappa Pro Series two, which was the first one ever. So that was nice to be the first to have ever done that. Um, obviously, we still got a few more very important games coming up. Obviously, we got finals and we got the Australia Cup. So, like you said, we want to enjoy it, but we still got a bit yeah. of yeah. Yeah. No time for celebrations yet or hangovers, right? We'll leave that to later. Yeah, yeah, that's it for sure. <laughs> now, the record for the season, you've got one round to go, but you've won 13, drawn six and lost two. Why did you lose uh, those two uh, those two games, guys? Come on, fire out. Why don't we have a perfect record there? What, what happened in those two losses? The first, the first game we lost because it was the opening game of the season and, you know, we just want to... We just, I don't know, I don't even know what happened. I think we had two red cards or something like that, just a bit of a lapse in judgment. And then the other one is, we're, we're winning too many games. Football Queens, they reached out. They were like, look, mate, you're making everyone else feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to go easy on them a little bit. But no, look, you know, we try and be um, as good as we can and try and perform every match. We've got a really deep squad and a lot of great players. So, you know, we've been, we've been having a good season and, yeah, just trying to win as many games as we can. And I guess sometimes the losses are so they make it stronger and you just got to move on yeah gents we can see on the um on the screen highlights of sunday's game the big game against olympic there um which secured the premiership as well but since then you've, you've, you've had quite a few parties there at the club celebrating um it's great to see um was it last night uh the, the with the premiership cups and and all the, the boys getting together um with the committee members um uh, like i said it's 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 now there's, there's still a lot to come. There's grand finals of Croatian tournaments. 
How hard is it now to focus on that? Or is this the, 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 the pinnacle? Is this the highest for you guys? Or, you know, you've still got your mind on your job and, and Scotty McDonald's really making you guys focus now on the next task? Okay. Jakob, yeah. you want to go um, first? Obviously, um, yeah. So I still on the rest of the prizes. We've had two. Scott's playing a big part in keeping us all, you know, it's not over yet. We've still yeah. got a couple more weeks left. Once that's done, we get those jobs done, then it's then it's time to party. So <laughs> I love it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, it's just yeah, that's pretty much like what we said earlier. It's always, you know, you enjoy in the moment, you know, after the 90 minutes, of course, you want to celebrate and, and be happy. And that's what you work hard for pre-season and during the season. So yeah, you know, you know, you just got to keep going and keep pushing forward. And that's what we want. We want to win as much as we can and pushing the FFA Cup as, or rather the Australia Cup as far as we can. And, yeah, just keep going. Yeah, I was just going to ask about I was just going to ask about that. And the, are the preparations any different? Because, obviously, you know, the Queensland competition is quite strong. But now you're coming out with full, against full-time professionals with uh, Western United. Uh, are you changing your uh, routine in any way or is it business as usual? Business as usual. Pretty much, yeah, business as usual. Nothing, nothing significant has changed. Yeah, I feel like we prepare for every game. Um, you know, we might do a little bit of analysis, this or that, but we pretty much just focus every game like we're going to win it. You know, we, we go out there to do to do our best and things like that. Obviously, you know, looking at Sydney United last year, they had a great run and, you know, you've got to beat A-League teams to, you know, make a portion to make a statement for future generations and, Obviously, there's teams that have um, won against A League teams before. We believe we can do it. We got a good squad, good squad, good depth. So we'll co we feel confident. But you know, we just got to work hard and work towards that, and that's what we're doing in training. So yeah, yeah, it's a great time to get them because they're in preseason as well, just like Sydney United got them last year. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Now, Jakob, I wanted to ask you. You're a Brisbane boy, yes, with a famous name like the Mudnich. Yeah, tell us a bit about your football career. How did? Where did you start? Did, did you start at Brisbane Croatia? How did you end up at, at the Gold Coast Knights? Yeah, so I started. Not sure how old I was. I was a kid, maybe four or five years old. I was playing at well, it was Rockley United back then, but now it's Brisbane Knights. Um, I was there for a few years, just playing with. Really, my mates, family, you know, had my uncles as coaches and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, then pretty much up until maybe like 13, it was just for fun. I was just playing with my friends, cousins, never took it seriously. Then made it into the Raw Academy at 13 or 14. I can't really remember. Uh, I was there for a few years. And then when I was 18, I left and went to Capalaba where I spent a year in the MPL. So that was my first year of senior football. Then after that season, went back to Raw for about a year. Yeah. So that was good. That was a, I was in the professional environment there. And then obviously sometimes things don't work out. So I left there, went back to Capella to finish the year, just some minutes in the legs. And then this year I made the move up the, down the coast here. And yeah, that's the... Okay. So, do you live in Brisbane um, in, on the Gold Coast, or do you live in Brisbane? Um, and the Brisbane. I'm still in Brisbane, so it's about fifty minute to an hour drive here, there and back. So it's a bit of a distance, but it's worth it. Oh, well done! And uh, um, Auntie, you're you're originally from Sydney, is that right? Um, how did how did you sort of how did your football career develop? No, no, I'm so I'm from Brisbane originally as well. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so I've been I've been to a fair few places. I, I uh, played football in Sydney and Melbourne as well. Pretty much the same as Jakob. I just grew up. I, I didn't play for the um, Brisbane Croatian club here though. Growing up, I played at Olympic in Brisbane City and a few clubs like that. And then um, uh, when I turned eighteen, um, you know, went overseas, spent a few years overseas, and then. Went down to Sydney and Melbourne and did a bit of travelling and obviously travelling around playing football and doing things like that. And then eventually came back to Brisbane and settled in at Gold Coast Knights and have a look back since then. It's been very successful and, yeah, it's been great. Um, I've been really Fantastic. happy. Fantastic. That's great. What, what are the strengths of the team this year? Um, you know, have you recruited well? Have You know, is Scotty just a fabulous coach? I mean, uh, what's been going on with the, with the team? Tell us the ins and outs. Oh, uh, look, I think... Probably the biggest strength of our squad is the depth. We've got how many, like 20 players that are all, yeah, can all start 
at least 20 that can all start. They all have potential. I think most of the boys, if they're in any other team, they're playing every single minute. And that obviously brings a lot of competition into the team. And it pushes us all to be the best we can. And I think that's one of the main reasons we've had the year we've had so far. Yeah, everyone's of a really high quality. So it helps, makes trainings better, makes games better. And everyone's really uh, everyone's really close as well. So I guess that chemistry. So probably the depth and the chemistry just in the change rooms, it's great. You know, like we're, we're here most nights and, you know, we're not sick of each other. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Now, now, gents, I want to ask you, has it been a distraction, all this talk about a national second division and Gold Coast Knights we know have, have applied for it, um, have you got kind of one eye constantly thinking what's happening next year? Will we, we will we be playing in a national second division, or, or has you know really Mac has really really tied it down and put you guys focusing on the here and now? Uh, I think short term focus right now. Yeah, yeah. There hasn't been much word of it. Yeah. As of lately, for whenever the last announcement was about. Yeah, yeah. Progressed. Yeah. It's been everyone's been very tight lipped. I've been asking around can't figure anything out so. <laughs> I, I think it would be yeah. good like obviously you know yeah. got love to do bigger and better things i think it would be great you know for teams in our in our um league here in queensland and then obviously across across the country yeah. it would be great if we could really get something like that going but um as far as that goes we you know we we're more than happy to cross that bridge when it comes to it you know yeah. i think that would yeah. be great competing at that level so it'd be great to be on the national stage for gold coast knights but obviously yeah what about personal uh, ambitions, you know, would you like to do a league? Would you like to go overseas? You know, what are you guys thinking? Are you, are you thinking about that, that future for yourselves? Yeah, of course. I guess that's you know, that's what you want to do. That's why you play football. You want to play at the highest levels and succeed and go as far as you can. That's you know, that's the personal goal. And you know, every game, every time you play, you want to perform the best and hopefully get seen. And you know, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult in the MPL, you know. It, it is kind of that league where it's you're in an in-between kind of zone. Um, so I guess playing, you know, in these FFA Cup games and winning these finals, it can kind of help. So if that, you know, national second division came along, I think it would really help not just myself or Jakob, it would help a lot of players, I guess, propel into that more professional environment, I guess. Yeah, I think it definitely, especially the national second division, it helped a lot of younger players mm. that don't get that opportunity in the A-leagues because... You know, at the average age of probably most daily teams is like 30. Yeah, probably, yeah. probably a bit older. Yeah. You know, so it's hard to get into one of those teams as a young player, definitely. Yeah. Oh, well, let's look at those fixtures again, the Australia Cup fixtures. And uh, uh, aren't I'm the same? I, I often call it FFA Cup to me. It's still the <laughs> FFA Cup, yeah. But uh, City United taking on Brisbane Raw, um, uh, Jakob's old club there. Um, that's uh, at the Sydney United Sports Centre this Saturday. On Tuesday, the Melbourne Knights hosting the uh, Giant Killers, Campbelltown City, uh, who on the weekend, or, or who in the first round, the round of 32, defeated MacArthur FC. And then it's uh, all, on Wednesday night, all roads lead to the Gold Coast Knights, um, Croatia Sports Centre, when the, the Knights host Western United. Will be a tough game, that one. But no doubt, if we had one... Cup set in the uh, opening round. We can have another one now. Why not? And uh, I, my money's on the Gold Coast Knights at home to do well against Western yeah. United. I just wanted to ask, so other than the two of you, uh, for people tuning in and watching Gold Coast Knights for the first time around Australia, obviously on Wednesday evening through 10 play, um, who are the players to look out for? He's going to make some friends. <laughs> Whoever he picks, he's going to make some friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you go first. <laughs> no, I think I'm not going to pick anyone or, you know, I think the whole 11, whoever's playing, even the boys that come off the bench, you'll see some fantastic players and, you know, will really give Western um, a run for their money. So everyone that you see playing or coming on, on to the pitch is, you know, absolute class player. So keep your eyes well out. Well said. Well said. Well, gents, on that note, thank you very, very much for being a part of our show tonight. We really, really appreciate it. Um, you've jumped on at short notice and you've been absolutely fantastic sports. And we wish you all the very best for the uh, um, uh, final series there in the NPL Queensland um, uh, competition, as well as the Australia Cup coming up yeah. next Wednesday. So go one, go one further and win the grand final as well. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. It. No, we'll, we'll win it all. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. Good on you. Thanks, Jacob and Ante. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thanks, Thank for you. Us. Thanks for having us. Good on you.
Awesome. Jakob uh, uh, Mudnic and Ante Poljak from the Gold Coast Knights. Charming fellas. Um, and it's great to see the Gold Coast Knights doing very, very well up on the uh, Gold Coast. Ante, we're going to take a very, very short break. Uh, when we do return, we're going to have, we're going to try it. We're going to attempt a live cross to Balmore Sports Ground um, to catch up with your, um, with your, one of your uh, three sons. Uh, Liam Grabovac, who's going to be bringing us all the latest with uh, tonight's NPL New South Wales clash between Sydney United and Sydney Olympic folks. Don't go away. Who's to say who's young, who's old, compared to who? Age is complicated. You see, most people really stop getting older at age 26 but their bodies just don't get the memo. So hidden inside most over 50-ish year olds is the soul and spirit of a 26-year-old with the same loves and desires and hopes and dreams, just in slightly different packaging. Why waste time wondering when you could be enjoying? It's your life and life is what you make it. So what are you waiting for? Welcome back to the Oscrow Soccer Show. And yes, Macron Australia, we've um, arranged the deal because Macron obviously is a sponsor and a kit supplier of Heyduk Split. For uh, viewers of the Oscrow Soccer Show, if you are a Heyduk fan, you've got a 5% discount, a special discount on official Heyduk Split merchandise thanks to a very special agreement between Macron Sports Hub Melbourne and the Oscrow Soccer Show. So all you have to do is go to the below website. There's the website down the bottom and include Oscrow in the coupon code section in the cart before you pay for your purchases and the discount will be calculated at the checkout. So there you go. Go for your life. Macronvic.com.au forward slash collections forward slash Hayduk dash split. So and, um, they've got some fantastic um, attire there. You can put your own favourite player. You can actually, even if you wanted to, you can put your own name if you want. So it makes for a great birthday present or Father's Day is coming up around the corner. So uh, well, that would be a perfect present for that. But in the meantime, Ante, we've got a special guest coming on, haven't we? We do. And we've got a familiar guest. Hey, Liam, how are you? Hello. Uh, not too bad, but after that last-minute goal from them... Wasn't the best way to end the evening, but yeah. What do you mean? What happened? I, I don't even know. What was the full-time score? Tell it was us what three happened. all. They literally scored in the last second of the game. It was a bit, oh, of, a, bit of a shit show, to be honest, at the back. <laughs> they kicked no, the ball. Why? <laughs> Sorry. There's someone, I don't know, one of the defenders kicked the ball into the other one and it just trickled into the back of the net. It was, yeah, it wasn't great, but overall... Yeah, that was it, uh... Overall, that was after United led 3-1, right? Yeah, United were up 3-1. They scored straight after to make it 3-2. They scored a bomb. And yeah, overall, people were saying we should have one eye on the cup, but it was a kind of one eye on the cup performance, but not in just like resting everyone. We actually tried to create, play good football and create combinations between each other. So that was, so like it was a preparation for the cup instead of just basically yeah. resting everyone for the cup. And we had a new goalkeeper in. Uh, who was that goalkeeper? Yeah, his name is Charles. I can't really say his last name, but yeah, he was from Ryder Me Lions. He played with Ryder Me during the season. He played a bit of 20s in first grade. 
he had some shaky moments today, but overall he was all right. In the first 20 minutes, he had a bit of a crap touch and it, it almost went away from him. He flapped at a few crosses, but overall he made some decent stops. Dave Booth's obviously covering for Daniel Nizic. So tell us, who, who scored and how did the scores go um, uh, throughout the match? Uh, in like the 10th minute, we got a penalty. Tarek Meyer had a shot, came off the defender's hand, got given a penalty. Chris Payne slotted it into the bottom left. Uh, the keeper just basically stayed in the middle and waited for the ball. And Chris Payne slotted it home. And then they scored after that, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. There were so many goals, I can't remember the order. Um <laughs> They scored. They basically cut inside, had a shot in the left foot, and it just went straight into the bottom corner. Nothing the keeper could do. And then we had a free kick after that, and Tarek Meyer hit the post. It was a great shot. He was probably our best player in the first half because he's been out for absolutely ages with an injury, yep. and he's only came back tonight. And then, yeah, we had a corner. He whipped it in. Came to Someone headed it away, came to Chris Payne, took it on the volley. And it went top corner. He didn't even celebrate. He looked surprised that it went in himself, to be honest. But, yeah, it was a pretty good goal. And then we they were pretty much all over us for the start of the second half. And then we got on the break as Jennings and Lacalandra. They were pro- there are outlets in the second half. And we had some good interplay between them. And Kawaguchi whipped the ball in low. Uh, Payne had a shot. came off the keeper. And Tyson was there to just bundle it in. And then, yeah, and then obviously they scored that last goal, which was, yeah, a bit of a shocker. But and were shocker. there were there more than fifty people on a Wednesday night gonna... for a game that's been rescheduled <laughs> at the last minute? There, there was about a hundred because they had youth presentations. And, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so that's the way they got the crowd up. But I remember being young, like Olympic versus United was a game to yeah. go to. You know what I mean? It was like Melbourne. Melbourne Knights and South Melbourne, that was, yeah. that was the game to go to. But nowadays, it doesn't have that same feeling. Not many people care anymore, to be honest, especially on the Olympic side. All That's their support, supporters are old and they really haven't grown their club into the next generation. Yeah. That's sad. Really sad to see, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it really, really is because, um, you know, whether or not this second division does get off the ground or not, you know, you'd, you'd like to think that bit by bit there's, um, you know... Uh, the, the clubs themselves are, seem to be working. And, and the same thing here in Victoria as well. Um, the, the Greek clubs, they've all gone their separate ways. So too have the Croatian clubs, I must add. But, you know, down here, Preston Lions, they get crowds of 3,500. It, it's it's mm. amazing. It's like the old days reinvented and they're doing something right. I just wish that we could do the same sort of thing with our clubs as That's well. Right. I've, got, I've got a bit of news with the second, second division. I've actually heard that... The teams that are going to be in the second division are going to keep their teams in the state league as well, but they're going to have to be an under-25 squad. So similar to the academies that happened for the actual A-league teams, right. they're going to have to keep their state league teams there. And yes, I have heard um, of a few clubs that have paid the uh, paid the fees and have you know tried to enter the second division, and one of them's from Sydney. So um, go the boys. Hopefully that all works out. That sounds like it's going to be a bit of a disaster. After that pitch, by yeah, I don't know. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. So from a couple of different sources. So that's why you know where there's a bit of uh, smoke, there, there there could be fire. So uh, thank you so much for joining us, Liam. And thanks for that wrap. Thank you, guys. I wanted to do it in the stadium, but a steward told me I had to get out of there because they'll turn in the lights off soon. So oh, no. Uh, what's, what's your tip? Are we going to beat uh, Brisbane on Saturday or, or what? I think we will. We were good against them last year. We'll get a big crowd. They probably have a worse squad than last year. We probably played our best today than we have in the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, after tonight's performance, I think we can do them. We'll probably go to extra time again. I don't see us keeping a clean sheet, but, yeah, I think I think we'll do them. I like your That's confidence, good. Liam, and I hope yeah. that you are right. I hope that you are right. That's for sure. I hope all the Crow teams get through. Absolutely. Get, come on down there. Saturday at 2 p.m., everybody who yeah, can. Absolutely. And obviously. Good on you, Liam. Thanks very much for for joining us. And I hope you, hopefully your dad didn't uh, twist your arm too much. He hasn't broken yeah, or anything like that. Don't forget, to, <laughs> don't forget to buy some milk on the way home, all right? Hey, settle down. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, before we get into a, a into a domestic dispute, we better let Liam go. Thanks, mate. Well, thanks See for joining later. us. Thanks.
<laughs> Liam Grabovats, hey, he's got some. Uh, we got we got a lot of talent. We these young uh, young folks. So uh, last week Bianca Garlic was was you know first time on camera. Just lo- I love the camera. The camera loved her, and uh, Liam was very entertaining there as well. Um, you know, obviously um, um, well 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 brought up and well reared there. So well done to uh, yourself, Auntie, and to the uh, to, to the lovely missus there, Mandy. Oh, thanks, mate. Yeah, I, I will talk about the swearing <laughs> later. Uh, when yeah. it comes <laughs> now, we're going to take a break, a very quick break, folks. Look, where we return, it was it's not just us celebrating our 50th episode birthday, if you like. Uh, the, the Croatian Herald, the Hrvatski Viesti, during the week had a major milestone, much, much bigger milestone than we, what we um, are celebrating. 40 years, 40 years in existence since the very, very first issue hit the newsstands way back in 1983. So after this a very short break, we'll be speaking to the editor-in-chief of the um, uh, the Croatian Herald, the Hrvatski Vjestik, George Sabljak. Oh, don't go away, folks. Um, there's a lot to talk about, and uh, we'll find out all the inside info about uh, Dandenong City, Hajduk's celebrations, because that, that's uh, uh, George's club. So don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the show. Yes, welcome back to the show. And in the background, we have waiting from the Hrvatski Viestik, celebrating 40 years, George Sabjak. Welcome to the show, George. And tell us, you must be, yes, we can. Yeah, we can. You must be partying. The southeast suburbs of Melbourne, the home of the NPL2 champions. (laughs) (laughs) Dandy, you're in Dandy. As you can tell by the top, I think he's wearing it backwards there, yeah? Mate, that's your... Um... <laughs> it's your mirror, doesn't matter. Anyway, George, how are you doing? How's things with you, mate? Good, mate. It's been a big week. It's been it's a huge week. It's probably cross with me last uh, Saturday. I don't know how coherent I would have been. Honest, <laughs> uh, your boy did very well, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you so much, George. How long have um, you been the editor at uh, and involved with the Croatian Herald, George? It started off as uh, I'll give it a go for two years, and uh, that was 2011. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, 12, is that 12 years now. <laughs> yeah, about that. Fantastic. Yeah, because right. well, been done. a host of uh, famous people like Taunchi come through the doors, and then I you've had um, as well. You've been a David Davudovic, he, he started at, um, at the Viestic as well, didn't he? Yes, yeah, there's been a, there's been a few of these. Uh, I don't know if anybody uh, uh, knows or remember Alan Rados too. He started yes. his career at uh, uh, the Viesnik, um mm-hmm. and we you know we've created some uh, pretty good talent out over the years. One uh, and look, I think too, it's also worthy to mention that over the forty years, we've only ever had two, uh, three, four editors in chief. Two of them are here in this podcast. Yeah, yeah, which is an incredible effort. Which means you know, there's not that much of a turnover in terms of um, the staff and uh, people get to know them in the community, and that's what really the VST is today. It started off as a political journal, to you know, it was a because back then there was a massive mission, you know, anti Yugoslavia, this and that, anti Serbism. After the war was won, it was like, well. Okay, we've got to attack somebody now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of mellowed a little bit, and uh, but we still uh, hit pretty hard when we have to. Um, and uh, yeah, but now it's more of I think most people look at the Viesnik as a journal, a document of documenting our history as a community. Yeah. Um, and you'd be surprised, and t- Taunchy would probably know how many people come to you 
years and years down the track and said, oh, my dad did an article for the Viesnik, uh, you know, back in 1986. Can, do you guys have a copy of it? And we, of course we do because we've got archives. It's just it's a bit of a you know, head stuff to uh, go and find it. Yeah. Now, uh, George, I guess one of the, one of my most favourite things in recent uh, editions has been the postcards from Croatia, uh, where people get to send their photos from overseas. And for us who are uh, shivering over here in, in cold little Victoria, um, I guess it makes us either envious or it makes us sort of motivated for us to maybe next year go overseas when the Euro 24s are going to be on and what you're not. But another big thing that, that about the VSC, of course, is the soccer component. Um, and that's what we're all about. And, and it's great to see the Viesnik is still very much stronger. Mate, in your eyes, how important, just how important are the Croatian clubs here in Australia for keeping our Croatian community alive down under? Well, it goes without say. I mean, um, uh, a lot of them have got a history longer than the Viesnik, to be honest. I mean, you mm. look at some of the history behind the club, North Geelong, 1967, uh, Knights, I believe, 1953. Um, Dinamo was, I think, late 70s as well, or thereabouts, uh, mid 70s, late 70s. Yeah. Then you got Sydney United, you know, the, the name itself. Yeah. So these have been clubs that were actually established more so for, I guess, community reasons where people would get together and a soccer match would break out. You know, uh, over the years, like, uh, it's, it's sad to see that. Some of them have, you know, disappeared because they haven't had the support. And I was just thinking to the other day, in, in, in Melbourne, we had at one stage, I think, 11 clubs, which is mm. insane. Like, when you look at the big, the bigger four, you got, you know, your Mostar was around, uh, Gorse Beach, Tornado, a split Strathmore still there, um, Bunker, Wednesday nights, you know, it just goes on and on. And, and look... To their credit, so most of them are still here. So I think we've still got about seven or eight of them, Vukovar mm. as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it is important. It's more important. Uh, I think the two key elements in the community is has and always will be football and then folklore. You know, because yes. a lot of the times you see kids running around in soccer boots and Wednesday night they'll be dancing, you know, Shokadia here and there. <laughs> I, I, I that helps how, with their football. That helps with their football, right? <laughs> I, I wonder how many of the folkloric group teachers have had to tell some young boys straight after training, take your football boots off on the dance floor. We can't have that. I know uh, I know. in Geelong <laughs> there's been a couple at Lado that have turned up straight after soccer training. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Hey, the interesting anecdote was, uh, to that was uh, Nancy, my wife, she used to teach sporting bit here. Yeah. And... She could never get any of the boys there because of the Monday night, I think she had folklore Wednesday, it always clashed with soccer training. So she had like 15 girls and then she said, well, you know, what? I'm going to change the folklore to, I think it was Tuesday night or something like that, or I can't remember now, whatever night it was when nobody was doing anything. So she forced my two boys to come and before you know it, they brought along their friends and we had like seven or eight Boys dancing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so That's tell us, fantastic. Tell us, George, obviously uh, in your time, Croatia have done very well in the uh, World Cup and um, obviously there's been a lot of trophies won by Croatian teams here. Are they some of the highlights, you know, um, of your time at, at the Viesnik or what are some of the highlights? Certainly today's headline um, to, to, to see three Croatian clubs take out the championships in their respective and not just any league, but NPL, uh, Adelaide last week. Um, and I think if I remember uh, thinking uh, that year when Croatia qualified in the final against France, I think that we had a record amount of Croatian clubs win trophies. And I think that was just purely on the momentum and adrenaline of, uh, of, of the 18 2018 World Cup um, campaign. Yeah, I think you might be right, actually. As we've seen just photos of the um, front page of the uh, um, the Croatian Herald and the front page of the English supplement, the new gen as yeah. well. Um, but out now at your favourite news agency as well. Um, and um, look, let's we'll talk about uh, past glories, but let's talk about most recent glories as well. Dandenong City, um, we're going to so show some footage there again. Um, good old flares. Was that you, George, lighting those flares, throwing them onto the pitch? Was it, yeah? <laughs> no, if I told you it was, you'd be shocked. 
<laughs> we better not. We better. We better leave what happens on 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 to a little on party and happening there. But uh, <clears throat> last year, a Danny Nong City relegated from the NPL Victoria, and it is such a focal part of the southeastern Croatian southeastern suburbs Croatian community. But uh, back back in the top flight, um, must really be in credit to a lot, a lot of hard workers behind the scenes there. Yeah, look, um, there's too many to mention, but obviously <laughs> being spearheaded by the likes of Nick Tolios, who I don't know for what route, but success just follows him wherever he goes in whatever yeah, he's amazing. Kingston, uh, Bentley, now Dandy. And it's first year at Dandy too, mind you. So usually a coach will take maybe a couple of years to settle in, build his squad and, uh, from a base. But, um, you know, the likes of him and... He'd be credited to the football manager um, in football operations in general have just done an amazing job. And considering, I think, when when we reflect on the season, round six or seven, we were actually thinking we wanted to get promoted, boys, but we're actually looking down, staring down the barrel of relegation zone. Yeah. <laughs> and to make to to turn that around and have an incredible record at home, I think we won uh, something like I can't remember exactly. I think. I think we only lost two games at home, to be honest, um, this year, and uh, which is important because everything else you win away is just a bonus. Um, probably one of the, I guess, sad things about this year was, you know, your boys down there not being able to uh, stay in, which would have had four teams in the top flight league. In the yeah, well, it would have been excellent. Yeah. had that once. No, I, I had the privilege, actually, of commentating pretty much every home game. And it was quite frustrating at times because there were times where, where and remember, this was a very young team, and yeah. there were times where they, they actually dominated. They just could not convert. And like I jokingly said to Auntie, I think the uh, the leading goal scorer for North Geelong this year was the own goals category. I think there were four own goals. And it's, it's sad to say, and that probably shows you just how much of a problem it was to convert. But on the, on the bright side, they've got a lot, a lot of good, talented youngsters that uh, made their made their debut this year or became um, regular senior players, and and it's good to see that there are a lot of these homegrown players. And it's I like and, that, and, 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 yeah. I like that young Zuchic is really is he, he'll be a goal sneak that little kid. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, I know he was trialing at Haydook Split Juniors, um, yeah. and he's just recently come back, so I'm not sure how he's gone. But it uh, might be good to get him on the show in uh, in the in coming weeks, aren't it, just to find out how things went with him overseas. Yeah, and seeing seeing that you've been quite close to this MPL too, we're fascinated by the crowds at Preston Lions. I mean, do you know uh, what's going on there and why you know they crush even a lot of MPL teams around the country with their crowds? And what are they doing there? Yeah, uh, Sasha, uh, like, on, what's his name again? Ogdenovsky. Ogdenovsky, yeah. Former coach of Dandy is very involved down there as well, obviously. And look, they've just reinvented themselves over the years in terms of instilling a confidence. I think there was probably some, you know, stale committee members there that have now been, you know, gone or removed or sent packing. And there's a there's a there's a young mentality there of you know, thirty something year olds. You know, the president I think is barely just forty or, or so, and they've instill that confidence in, in themselves and in, in in the game. And look, at one stage, they were looking absolutely like a Monty for promotion. I'm not sure exactly what happened in terms of yeah why the wheels fell off there. Um, but uh, we, we didn't defeat them. We went with uh, one team that we didn't defeat. They beat us at home and away. Um, so they were that good. And actually, the, 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 that week when they lost to us, I, I don't think we went... I don't think we lost the game after that, to be honest. We might have lost one, or, but I'm not sure. But that after that that game, they just went from bad, you know, worse and worse and to the end, to the point where they were actually, if the, I was just kidding the other day, if the season went another four or five rounds, they'd be in relegation zone. There you go. Wow, that's amazing, yeah. And well, It just uh, also shows how well, you know, Dandy grew and then the confidence grew and then and they just um, kept going and, and won the premiership, which is fantastic. But it's true. It's not just home games. I mean, when we played them at uh, Dandy City, I think they had well over a 1,000 people that came. Mm. It was just nuts. That whole hill at Dandy City was full. That's yeah. terrific. That's that brilliant. Great to see. Great to see, honestly. And uh, I know North Geelong 
um, will next year be coming up against George Cross and will be coming up against uh, um, um, Preston Lions. The only team that, that's un unfortunately, um, Brunswick Juventus, the Italians, they've they been relegated into NPL 3, but they are a shadow yeah. of what they once upon a time used to be. Wow. But a lot, lots you, I, of... think, I think they're, uh, they've put an application in for the B League. Yeah, well, they yeah. <laughs> uh, Preston, I think there's also Preston, did. yeah, yeah. Um, so I think they're going on the back of the history of the whole, you know, <laughs> league and things like that. That they think they're probably and look, I don't know what sort of support they'll get. I certainly know that with the Croatian community, if we had one team in the top league, they would get a lot of support, um, and would almost, uh, I'm not saying we will go back to the NSL type crowds, but yeah. you know, it wouldn't be bad to you know. be more focused. Yeah, George, George, that's a good question, and that's something I wanted to ask you. I know when we had Melbourne Knights President Parve Yusuf on early in the year, and 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 he was quite honest. He was quite when I asked the question, "Do you think the Knights are sort of holding back because you know there's only so much you can do in the NPL Victoria competition, but when it gets to the National Second Division, that's when the club, that's when the community will sort of go crazy." Do, do you think a lot of these clubs, you know, the clubs that we just mentioned, but maybe South Melbourne's as well of this world, but more importantly, the, um, the Croatian clubs, do you think they're holding back a little bit? Because really, there's not that much glamour. There's not, not that much glory in the local NPL Victoria competitions, really. Yeah, look, to an extent, I, I agree. I mean, in, in South Melbourne's case in particular, you just know Victory's going to lose half their support. <laughs> That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it is. They'll, they'll all go to South Melbourne. Uh, we'll pick up the collective uh, support from all of the other clubs that uh, will support anything that's doing well. Uh, and, you know, that, that'll obviously be the Melbourne Knights. Um, and, and look to build strength in that as potentially a feeder club, you know. Um, uh, sorry, feeder clubs to to Melbourne Knights. I yeah, mean, yeah. Kid wouldn't want to be playing at a sort of a, as a, at a B League or national level. It's um, yeah. you, you look at the um, production uh, of players back in the NSL days. You just don't see it now. It's just not yeah. there. I mean, I can't, I can't even name one to be honest. Yeah, yeah it's so yeah. true. So true. Well, on Mon on Tuesday night, folks, we're expecting a huge, huge crowds. Um, at Knight Stadium, we're, ex we're we're asking every every um, Croatian in Victoria to turn up to to Knight Stadium on Tuesday. The same uh, on Sun on Saturday up in Saturday. Sydney and Wednesday up on up on the Gold Coast. It's going to be a chance for those three Croatian clubs to be get on the national stage, and we certainly hope we're going to uh, see some really good crowds. But uh, George, once again, happy birthday, happy happy 40th anniversary. Not to you, of course, because you're only 21, but uh, um, but to uh, to the Croatian Herald. Oh, just a quick years. shout out to to the you know the people that you know made that, that this success over the years. You know, my assistant Susanna, yourself, obviously Tonchi, uh, Borto, um, the late Tom as well. Which yes, um, you know, he was never just, forget. Uh, a, pillar, a pillar of the society. Uh, just a, people still talk about him in that yeah. regard and hold him in that high regard. He was and a lovely course, man. Um, we wouldn't be where we are today, given the digital era, if it wasn't for the uh, financial uh, support of uh, the Filipovic family. They've, they've stepped in and said this paper needs to survive, not because of the us, but because of the people that are in that age bracket that never... Uh, or never will uh, adopt that the digital age, and yeah. you know you better believe it. When somebody doesn't get their viesnik delivered, my phone rings. <laughs> oh. <laughs> of you course, believe it. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. he must have seen a lot of uh, technology. I mean, I remember when I started working with Australian Soccer Weekly, we used to type on electric typewriters, yes. and then um, you know, then we went to computers. And now yeah. you can do it from home. I remember the old yeah. office, the Viestnik office, uh, where yes. George used to work as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was silly because we were emailing each other in the same room. Like, you know. <laughs> 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 That's very true. It was, it was but, amazing. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, stop yeah. this, uh, you know, commute of an hour there and back every day and just work from home. Yeah. And everybody agreed and we said, yeah. Uh, well, well, look, we we run we run radio shows from home, for, and and it's probably that was the fallout from the COVID era, I guess. But now everything seems to be so mobile and so 
ain't mm. capable to be taken from anywhere on the road. And even in Croatia, the digital nomad revolution sweeping the country yeah. and people going over there and working. And Well, um, you'd, know, you'd know too that um, we, we, we've got quite a, a substantial presence and editorial staff that does the paper in Zagreb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so they provide content, uh, the editorial, uh, sorry, the graphical, uh, graphic ed editorial and uh, uh, proofreading, which has been a, a nightmare over the years because it's impossible to proofread just and get the paper out. So we've got two people who are just actually just sitting there looking for mistakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those that editions... That's how when I pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> Those editions when Dalich was out in Australia were just absolutely fantastic and they're great yeah. tribute and some great photos um, yeah. in, in yeah. The, both of those editions. So. Well, there's Very the... Well done. There's the front pages of this week's of Yes, Nick, on the screen coming now. There you go. Get it out at your favourite news agency. And if your favourite news agent doesn't stock it, ask them to stock it and make sure to get your hands on the paper. There's still nothing nothing better than getting the old um, hard copy newspapers, leafing it, leafing it over while drinking your and coffee. And the English section. The English section for those who don't read Croatian as well. Yeah, there is. That's exactly right. George, thank you so much for joining us also at late, uh, late notice. So we really appreciate it once again. Thank you. Uh, happy 40th uh, anniversary, birthday, yeah, however you want to call uh, it. Great milestone for you guys. 50, uh, 50 episodes. Podcasts, which is fantastic yeah. too. Good Thanks, night. So Thanks, George. Yeah. Thank you, George. Good night. George Subduck, the editor in chief of the Hrvatski Vjesni Croatian Herald newspaper. Geez, we've almost gone a full 90 minutes of the show tonight. It was always going to be a big show, but we didn't realize just how big it is actually going to be. But uh, we had international viewers, aren't it? We had viewers all over the place. And also, big, big shout out to all the Croatian socialites who are tuning into um, our show for maybe the first time tonight. Hopefully, you'll be back with us. Um, again next week. Speaking of next week, it is next Thursday night, folks, at 8 p.m. Thursday night. So next week there's going to be full-on football throughout the week. Tuesday night, the Melbourne Knights taking on Campbelltown City in the Australia Cup. Then on um, Wednesday night, the Gold Coast Knights hosting the Western United. But before that, on Saturday, Sydney United hosts Brisbane Raw. And uh, we'll then be there on Thursday to recap all the action. And hopefully it's going to be a case of three out of three withers for the Australian Fingers Croatian crossed. Club. Fingers crossed. Let's hope so. Good. All right, Ante. Good night. And uh, we'll see you next Thursday. Enjoy your football. Thanks, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night.